and welcome to St Wilfrid 11.15am service online. Thanks so much for tuning in today, the first Sunday of Advent, a time when we look forward to Christmas. It's time of preparation, of expectation, of anticipation as we remember God with us in the person Jesus Christ. This week we have been continuing to join in with the Love Your Neighbour campaign bringing bags of blessing to families, individuals and couples across Bognor Regis. This Christmas time we're going to be continuing to join with Love Christmas, an extension of the Love Your Neighbour campaign and we're going to be bringing uh, some extra hampers of hope and uh, some boxes of joy to those most in need this Christmas time. Talking of Christmas, this week we announced our Christmas services and events and all the details are available on our website at Wilfred.church forward slash Christmas. Tonight, love to invite you to join us in our prayer Zoom, 7.30 p.m. online via Zoom. We're going to be praying for Bognor Regis and for the ministry of St Wilfred Church here in Bognor Regis. This Wednesday evening and every Wednesday evening, I'd love to invite you to come to, to Wednesday group. It's a time to share life together, to open God's word together, to pray together. All the details about the prayer and about group, you can also find those online at our website, stwilfred.church. Well, we're gonna come to a time of worship now. And as we do, I'd love to invite you to pray with me. Oh Lord, we want to invite you here by the power of your Holy Spirit, wherever we might be and whoever we might be with. Indeed, whenever we may be watching this, would you come and fill our hearts today with your joy and your peace, for your praise and your glory. Amen.
Let's pray together. Father God, we pray for Bogna Regis. We pray for the local community, for all the things that are going on, for all of the organisations and charities, for all the other churches and for all those who are vulnerable in the town. We pray that you may just share your peace with them and just send your Holy Spirit to be the comforter. Father, we pray for the um, the lockdown that we're just coming out of now, this week. Um, pray that uh, it would have had the impact that we all hope that it has. That we'll see cases coming down as we have in some places. Pray for all of the challenges that people have experienced in this time and also for the blessings that some people will have experienced. Um, just pray for your um, hand over all of those things for all of those people. Lord, we turn in prayer to your world. Um, lots of stuff going on out throughout the world, but we pray especially for the US as they transition between um, their leadership. And we pray for all those countries who are struggling with the pandemic. And we thank you um, all across the world and um, here in our country. We thank you for all of the people that have been working so hard this year. Um, we call them essential workers and they're all sorts of people from NHS to people that are emptying our bins every week. Um, and we just thank you so much for all of the hard work that they've continued to put in this year. Um, and Father, as we begin this time of Advent, this time of waiting and longing for the Saviour's birth, we just pray that that sense of comfort and joy is shared with everyone who needs it and those who need it the most. And we pray for your um, your peace and joy to be with people as they're looking ahead to Christmas and planning to a Christmas that's going to be quite different to any that we've had before. Um, and for some it'll be amazing to be able to spend time with some, some other households and for others it's going to be really challenging figuring out how that works and what that looks like. So we just pray for your your peace and joy and your love to be part of all of those preparations for everybody we join our prayers as we say the lord's prayer together our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us Lead and lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from, from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Marriage involves two people. They meet. You found me really attractive, really quickly. <laughs> they fall in love. She's passionate. <laughs> They get married and embark on a relationship that's designed to be one of increasing intimacy. I really couldn't see my life without her. But that's not automatic. We have to keep working at our marriage. Because I wasn't getting much affirmation, I started getting that from other places. Our marriage was nearly over. If you start building good habits in your relationship, you'll be reaping the effects of those choices in 5, 10 or 20 years' time. I can't let my past define my future. We have to build our own reality. The aim of the marriage course is to strengthen the connection between you as a couple. Love grows us. This is not a silly sentimental idea. This is science fact. How about one that we don't really hear about? How about this one? Fun. Marriage ought to be fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point? The marriage course is built on universal principles that are relevant to any couple anywhere. In years to come, you'll look back on having built a marriage as perhaps the most important achievement of all in your lives. As a first century Jewish teenager, the dream was to apprentice under a rabbi. After years of Hebrew school and scripture memorization, many hoped, but only few were chosen. 
Only the best of the best would hear the rabbi utter those sacred words, follow me. This is one thing that makes the Jesus story so incredible. As a first century rabbi, Jesus was no doubt looking for followers. And yet, instead of going to the best and the brightest, to the smartest and the sharpest, to the brainy and the brilliant, instead, Jesus went to fishermen and tax collectors. Not to the best of the best, but at best, the average of the average. Men who had long ago given up the hope of apprenticeship were now hearing that rare rabbinical invitation, follow me. Can you imagine? Leave your nets and follow me. Leave your homes and come and see. Leave your previous understandings to learn from me. Leave who you thought you were and discover who you'll be when you follow me. Out onto the sea to walk on water. Into the garden to pray to the Father. Through the darkness and back into the light. Out of the grave and into new life. Follow me. To the hungry and the hurting. Follow me. To the lowly and the lonely, follow me. From your first thought to your last breath, to a selfless life after a self-slaying death, to the world's end, to your nearest friend, to creation's coming mend and the bend of every knee, follow me. And from the first century, through the halls of history, down to you and me, the call repeats to be a cross-bearing, new self-wearing, good news sharing, for the poor caring, hope declaring disciple. There's no use in waiting, no use delaying, for to you and to me and to us and forever, the rabbi is saying, come, follow me. Well, we don't usually get to hear the end of the story when it comes to people encountering Jesus. It's rare that we get to hear the what happens next, whether it's Zacchaeus or the woman at the well, or those who have come to Jesus to find healing or freedom or some other transformation. Yet when we do get to hear the end of the story, when we do get to hear the what happens next, it's usually when an encounter with Jesus leads to a calling, a calling from him. In the Old Testament, we see this through the lives of many characters, whether it's Abraham or Moses or Isaiah. They have these incredible encounters once and multiple times, and then they receive very specific callings from him. And those callings, uh, they get involved with things that are really quite marvellous and also things that are rather mundane. But their calling begins with an encounter. And without the encounter, there's no calling. I want to talk today on that subject of where an encounter with Jesus leads to a calling from Jesus. Jesus. When Jesus called the disciples in the New Testament, he'd been journeying around the Galilee region, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, that the kingdom was close at hand. And he walks along the seashore. Incidentally, I've become even more interested in stories from the Bible uh, about what happens at seasides and seashores ever since I moved to Bognor Regis. It's such a privilege to live by the sea. Yeah, here's Jesus walking by the sea and he sees two brothers, one called Simon and one called Andrew. And they were fishing, for they were fishermen. Jesus called them whilst they were in the middle of doing what they did best doing what they did for a job. I wonder today what you are up to, what you are doing. What will you be doing when Jesus 
calls you? What will you be doing when you encounter Jesus? Maybe you're a fisherman, or a builder, or a nanny, or a carer, or a stay-at-home mum, or a carpenter, or a window cleaner, or a car salesman, or a binman. Whatever you might be doing, this may be your moment to encounter Jesus. And Jesus called to them and he said, follow me. Leave your nets and follow me. And Jesus called to them and he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Maybe you've been longing for Jesus to call to you, to speak to you for a very long time. Maybe you feel like Jesus wouldn't speak to you or Jesus couldn't speak to you or doesn't speak to you. I want to pray that today you hear very clearly the voice of Jesus calling to you calling to you where you are and calling to you to follow him. And at once they left their nets and that's what they did. They followed Jesus. Maybe today Jesus is asking you to lay something down, to leave something behind. Maybe you haven't got fishing nets, but maybe there's something else that you're holding on to. Maybe it's something physical, maybe it's something emotional, something inside of you that Jesus is saying now is the time to let go and lay that down. Now is the time to follow me. But the story didn't stop there. In fact, Andrew and Peter, Simon Peter, uh, they followed Jesus and then they met two more brothers just down the road. I'm sure that they all knew each other. This time it was James and John and they were also fishermen and they were there with their dad and the, exactly the same thing happened. Jesus called to them and said, follow me. And they left and they followed Jesus. It began with them encountering Jesus and then hearing a call from Jesus and then obediently following Jesus. On its own, if we read this passage as an isolated passage, it would just be another one of those readings where it's a nice story and he called the fishermen and up they went and they all followed Jesus together and that would be the end of it. But we're in the privileged position where we have the rest of the gospel in place and this time we know exactly what happened to these guys after they followed Jesus. We know that they spent the next three years following Jesus, all the way through Jesus' uh, ministry. Seeing Jesus healing people and transforming people's lives and, and hearing Jesus proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, which was close at hand. And we know that these men were joined by uh, other disciples who went on to, to be there when Jesus was persecuted and crucified but was risen again. They encountered the risen Jesus and then they saw him ascend into heaven. And then they continued to follow Jesus by his spirit. Jesus was now in heaven and now they followed him by his spirit, the Holy Spirit. And these blokes who started out by being fishermen, went on to be leaders and bishops and influencers in Christ's church. And they went on to spread the Christian message uh, across the whole of the region. In fact, across the whole of the world. And these men went on to write the pages of scripture that we have today. And they followed Jesus by his spirit their whole lives. It's a simple message today, but it's an important one. And it's just a few questions that I want to leave you with. Will you follow Jesus today? 
Will you encounter Jesus today? Will you hear him calling you today? And will you obediently get up, leave what you need to leave and follow him where he leads you? For his praise and his glory. Amen. Love to invite you now to respond to this word and it's very straightforward. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, to hold out your hands, nothing magical or special. We're just holding out our hands as if we're receiving a gift from heaven, becoming ready, becoming attentive, becoming aware for his spirit moving upon us and amongst us this morning or whenever you may be watching this. Shall we pray together? Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, wherever here may be. You are welcome to calm down in power today. Spirit of Jesus, would you come? We want to encounter you today. We want to hear from you today. We want to hear you calling us today. Holy Spirit, come, I pray. And I sense that there may be a few people watching this where actually you know what God is calling you to but potentially you've been uh, avoiding that calling for a long time. For one or two others of you, that message about laying down what needs to be laid down, you know exactly what that is, and actually that's something going on in your heart. It's, it's unforgiveness. Jesus is calling you to, to lay down that unforgiveness and to forgive, to move on today, to follow him. So I want to pray for you. Lord, for those of whom those words, those specific words mean a great deal, pray that you would come and minister your grace, minister your presence right now. Move in power, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I pray that this service might have been a blessing to you. As we go our separate ways now, wherever you may be going to, whoever you might be going to meet, I want to pray the blessing of Almighty God upon you. May you know his peace which surpasses all understanding and his joy that gives us strength today and for the rest of this week. Amen.